Hello, it's Sonia here with The Pretty Stitch. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, I'm so happy to have you here. So today we are going to be making another 18 inch doll project. We're going to be making a dress and to do this project I'm going to be using an F hook or a 3.75 millimeter and I have this yarn here. So I think it's kind of, I'm not sure the what kind it is but I believe it's like a sport weight yarn might might even be a little bit uh, lighter weight than that but I think you could also make this project using like a very light DK weight yarn I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest worsted I think it would be too big but I think like a light DK weight I know uh, like knit picks their DK weight yarn tends to be a little bit lighter weight so that might be a good choice or um, something that's labeled sport weight so I have this color. This was in my stash. It's been laying for a while. It's going to need a bath after I'm done the project. But uh, I think they used to call this baby yarn. And I really don't like this yarn as far as baby projects, to be honest. I'm not a big fan of the, the twist in there. But I do find it makes really pretty 18-inch doll outfits. So that's what we're going to use it for. And I'm hoping I have enough of this multicolor yarn. So to get started with this project, you're going to need this yarn this hook and you will need a stitch marker eventually and I'll have to find one. You can certainly just use scraps of yarn that works perfectly well or actual stitch markers. Alright so let's get started here. So we are going to be making this waist down. So it's going to be kind of modular this project. It's not made all in one piece and I was trying to figure out how to avoid a seam in the skirt because of the way the doll's hips are and you know, you know just so to make it easy to dress so I think I came up with a plan so what we're going to do is we are going to start off at the waistband as I said before and you're going to chain 49 so I'm just going to I've already started a little bit so I'm just going to work a couple chains here so once you have your 49 chains then our first row we will be working in rounds but we're just going to start off with the row and you might be wondering why I'm not doing foundation stitches because I find with foundation stitches they're very very handy for a lot of projects but for this one I just found it to be a little bit bulky around the waist and I wanted to kind of streamline it as much as possible so I find working in the chain is just a little bit of a slimming more you know slimming more slimming effect so if you don't want to work a chain then you know you don't have to and you want to work foundation stitches then, then certainly feel free but again you're going to work 49 uh, chains and then you're going to single crochet in the second chain from your hook and then just single crochet all the way across the chain until you have 48 stitches so i've already done that so let me show you here we go so I've got my 48, we're tangled. Where are we? I'm losing a stitch here. It's not always pretty, people. <laughs> and I'm the pretty stitch. <laughs> Alright, so let me fix that guy. Okay, so we've got our 48 single crochet here. So now we're going to turn this into a circle. And she's a little twisted so what I like to do for that and there's different ways of uh, doing this so it doesn't twist but you don't want it to twist so what I usually do is I just take my fingers at the top here and just gently run them down so everything is lined up straight now if you have a really long uh, chain or um, really long row it might be a little bit trickier but you know this is for a doll so it's not so bad so I have it like that and then I just bring her, her bring it around and we are going to slip stitch right in that first stitch there and then round one will be done and we'll get ready to start round two so you will have a little bit of a gap but when you're finishing your project you can easily take this tail and cinch that guy right up and it'll be all taken care of all right, so let's get started for round two. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain three. And this chain three is going to consist of 
a half double crochet and a chain one space. So after we've chained three, we're gonna skip our next stitch here and we're gonna half double crochet in the next. So we're gonna chain one, skip the next stitch, half double crochet in the next. And you're gonna continue that all the way around for round two. So it might be a little confused on the construction, uh, but hopefully it will all come together. I have a vision in my mind. <laughs> So I think I, I know how I want this to go. So uh, uh, hopefully it'll make sense to you down the road. So just go with it. Just go with it. I'm... Sometimes people will read my patterns and be like, um, what are you doing? But I just tell them, you know, just trust the process. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going, working half double crochet, chain one, skip the next space, and half double crochet in the next all the way around. So I will meet you back at the end of round two. Okay, so I am almost at the end of round two. So to finish up, I'm going to chain two and then we skip that last stitch and I'm going to join with a slip stitch on top of my chain two because that the chain one in the middle is the chain one space. So now we have finished up round two and now we're going to be working in continuous rounds for the skirt so that we uh, eliminate a seam and I will be using two colors for this but this skirt part is going to be all in this multicolored yarn and then I have this green here for some accent parts of the skirt so uh, you'll see that as we go down the road you can certainly make this all one color or you know you can just kind of play around with it and you know have fun with it all right so we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet right in that same st stitch there and we are going to pop two single crochet in the next chain one space. And then single crochet in the next half double crochet. And we're going to do that all the way around for round three. So in each chain one space, you're going to work two single crochet. And in each half double crochet, you're going to work one single crochet. So I'm going to continue this all the way around for round three. So here's my two single crochet. And then coming up on my half double crochet here, working my single crochet. So I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to meet you back at the end of round three. All right, so I am finishing up my round three and I forgot to tell you some important numbers. So at the end of round two, you're going to have 24 of these chain one spaces and at the end of round three you're going to have 72 stitches so what we're going to do is we're going to place a stitch marker in our last stitch because we want to work in continuous rounds to avoid a seam and i have to find my st oh there's my stitch marker so my scrap piece of yarn you can certainly use an actual stitch marker or bobby pins you know whatever you have on hand but we're going to mark that last stitch. It's really important because it's going to be easy to lose track of how many stitches you have. So that stitch marker really comes in handy. All right, so we are not going to join. So we're just going to keep crocheting around and around and around. So it looks like an invisible seam. That's the goal. So now I am going to work two single crochet. We're going to work in the back loops because I want these front loops exposed and you'll know why later in the pattern. So in this next stitch here, I'm just gonna pop in two single crochet. And we're gonna do that all the way around and the reason why is because I want the skirt to be a bit fuller, kind of have like a bell look so we need to get a lot of stitches in here because it is a fancy Fancier dress, like a princess dress, I guess. Ball gown, something of that sort. So we are just going to put two single crochet in each of these guys working in the back loops. So it's going to be a ruffly effect, but that's, that's what we're going for. So I'm going to keep going, working two single crochet in each stitch, and I will meet you back at the end of round four. 
Alrighty, so I have finished up row four. So you can see we're nice and roughly there. And I marked my last stitch. So I've got my stitch marker and my last stitch. And now we are gonna just continue. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna to need to increase more. I'm thinking not, but we'll, we shall see. We're gonna play it by ear here. As I am making this as we go, I have this picture in my mind. I have notes written down, but I haven't actually... Uh, I did some swatches here and there, so um, yeah, this is, this is going to be fun. Alright, so we are going to just single crochet right in that first stitch. And we're working in both the loops now, so no more back loops. And we're just going to single crochet around. So I'm going to work uh, up to row... Or we're going to work up to round 10. So I will meet you back at the end of round 10. So what you'll want to do is you're just going to continue to single crochet around. And I'll see how we're looking at round 10. So we're nice and roughly right now, but that's what, what I wanted. I want a lot of gathers at the waist there. So I have my stitch marker here. I'm just working even, single crocheting in both loops there. And at the end of each round, just make sure you mark your last stitch so you don't lose track. So this is row, round five. We're not doing rows. Round five. So I'm just going to keep going. So I'll meet you back at the end of round 10 and we'll see how we're looking. All right. So I said I was going to work up to 10 rounds, but I actually worked 35. And I'm going to uh, join in my first stitch. So you want to work 35 rounds. Now, if you wanted to have the same color, you don't, I just thought of this now, but I want to have a contrasting color for the trim. So I'm going to uh, just attach my yarn in the back here and then work the same as I did here. You could have done this. I'll have a written pattern for this. So in the written pattern, I'll state, you know, to do the trim right away. And you'll just do the same thing. You know, if you wanted to use the same color, you wouldn't need to cut your yarn. You would just join, chain one, single crochet in the stitch, and then work your trim all the way around. So I am going to do that right now. So just attaching right here, but it's in the back. No one will see. Get that tail out of the way. So working my single crochet in that same stitch. And then double crochet in the next. Actually, I didn't chain two. Whoops. Chain two. Get it right. And then work my double crochet. Now it looks a little wonky there because of the uh, join, but it'll be fine. That's why we attach it in the back and we skip one. Single crochet in the next. Chain two. Double crochet in the next. And I'm skipping the next stitch. So I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around to finish up my little trim on the bottom. And then we'll keep going. So now we're going to get ready and we are going to work on the front. And this is a halter style dress. So we are going to do that next. All right, so we're gonna work on the front. So looking at the skirt part of our dress, so where we started off here, this is going to be the back, where we joined. And as you can see, I did work continuous rounds. So you have no seam here, which is really, really nice. So we're gonna flip this over. So wherever you joined in this area, that's going to be the back. This will be the front. So now we're going to work on the other side of our chain here. And I am going to attach my yarn on the side here. So wherever, it doesn't really matter exactly where on the side, but just on the side. And get my yarn. Yeah, I had wanted a longer skirt, but I was running out of yarn. And I do want this colorway for the top part of the dress. So this is what we're doing. Shorter dress it is. Okay, so we are going to chain one and single crochet right in that same stitch. And you're just going to continue to work 21 more single crochet across. 
Now, this, as I said before, this is more of a fingering weight, maybe fingering weight, sport weight type yarn. So if you're using legitimately sport weight or even closer to DK weight yarn, then you might only need to work 20 single crochet across for the front of your dress, but for, I was fitting this on the doll and this will need 22. So we are gonna do 22. So yeah, 20 might be plenty for you or maybe even 18. So if you have a doll that you can model it on, then that might be helpful for you to help with fit. And as I said before, some dolls, you know, are a little bit smaller in the torso area. Some dolls are a little bit larger too. So that might also affect how many uh, stitches you might actually need across. But I'm going to work 22 across. And it will be really easy depending on how many stitches. I would just suggest having an even number across to customize it. So this isn't one of those patterns where the stitch count has to be completely exact. But I just re recommend having an even amount of stitches. So whether you have 22, 20, 18, you know, it's going to be fine. All right, so I am working 22. So I'm going to uh, finish that up and I'll meet you back. All right, so obviously um, we are working on the right side here. I hope, I'm not sure if I made that clear. So uh, you attach the yarn here and then I worked my 22 single crochet across. So to however many you, you would need it, you know, it's fine. If it's a little bit more, a little bit, I don't think you would need to use more single crochet than 22, but if, you know, use a little bit less, that's quite all right. So now we're going to get ready for row two, and we will be working in rows for this front part. And you're going to single crochet across again, working even. So I'm just chaining one, turning, I'm going to single crochet right in that same stitch, and then just continue to single crochet across. And I am going to work a total of six rows. Now again, if you are using a heavier weight yarn, then you might only need to work four rows before we start decreasing because we are making more of a halter style, so we want the top to kind of be more triangular like that. So we will need to do some decrease rows. But I'm gonna work a total of six rows, working even. So again, if you need to work four, and I will make another one in a uh, heavier weight yarn. I'll see if I have some like Karen Simply Soft. I'm curious to see how it would work up in that yarn. So I am going to do that or my six rows with this yarn right now and I'll meet you back at the end of row six. And obviously this is the wrong side here. All right so I have worked my six rows here so now we're going to start doing some decreasing and this is the right side. So we are going to decrease just two stitches, one on each end, because again, we want to get it into that more triangular shape. So I'm going to chain one and turn my work. So now I'm on my right side. So we are going to work one decrease or together stitch. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to insert my hook and pull up a front loop only and go into the next stitch working in the front loops only. So I have three loops on my hook and now I'm going to yarn over and pull through the two and then yarn over and pull through the final two to work the single crochet. And I like doing it like this because I just think it looks a little bit less bulky than a traditional uh, single crochet or together stitch. So now I'm just going to single crochet all the way across until I get to my last two stitches and then I'm going to do the decrease or together stitch again. So then I will have a total of 20 stitches. Now, if you started off with 20, then you would have a total of 18, or if you even had 18 stitches. As I said before, this is customizable because you know, you can, you're just decreasing one on each end. So the stitch count isn't, you know, too important. You know, you just wanna make sure that it's fitting the doll pretty well, that's all. And again, if you're using, um, you know, a heavier weight yarn, then you might have a different stitch count. But again, this is like a fingering sport weight yarn. I'm not sure the label got lost a long time ago. And I think it was labeled like baby yarn. Like what is that baby yarn? <laughs> I think, you know, they marketed the yarn for making baby projects, but I don't really, I don't like this like 
it's got like that sparkle thread through it. I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of that for some reason. But I think it makes really pretty doll clothes, so that's what we're using it for. Alright, so I am at my last two stitches. I'm getting ahead of myself. So here's my last two stitches working in my front loops. Pull up a loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two. So there we go, we've worked a little decrease row. So I have 20 stitches now. So for round, this was a uh, row seven. So for row eight for me, I'm just working even. So one stitch in each. So I will do that real quick and I'll meet you back at the end of my row eight. Again, you might have a different uh, number row, numbered row, and that's quite all right. Okay, I'll meet you back. Okay, so I finished working row eight, just working even, so now I'm at row nine. And we are gonna decrease again. So working in my chain one and turned already. So I'm just pulling up my front loop, front loop, and pull through the two stitches. And then yarn over, pull through the two to work my final stitch. And I am going to single crochet across. So at the end of this row, I will have a total of one, or I'm sorry, 18 stitches. And then for row 10, I am just going to work even. So all of my even rows are even stitches. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish up this row here, row 9, working my uh, decreaser together stitch on the end. And then for row 10, I'm going to work even. Okay, so I have finished up row 10 here. So now I'm at a row 11. So I want to decrease one more time. So then I'll have a total of 16 stitches. So when you're at your final decrease, then we are going to actually start working on the straps. So um, don't go and work another even row after this. I mean, you will be, but you won't be. So uh, just work your final decrease row and then um, you'll need to check out the directions to see what to do next. So don't cut your yarn or anything like that. Trying to avoid as many ends as possible. So we will be working on straps and trim and all kinds of goodness. So try to do that, make it as seamless as I can. <laughs> all right, so let me finish this up working my final decrease and I'm gonna have a total of 16 stitches. Again, your stitch count might be different. Okay, so now we are going to work in rounds. We're going to work in this, uh, the strap. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff. So what we're going to do to start with is we are going to make our first strap. So I want to make the straps so that they're connected. You could just sew ribbons, but I want it to be very secure because if a child is going to play with this, you know, if it's literally stitched on there, they're going to have a lot harder time getting that strap off. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to turn and I am going to work 50 chains for my first strap and we're going to put a little decorative flower on the end and you'll see what we're going to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and work these 50 chains. Now you might want to work a different amount of chain. It doesn't really matter the amount. Just keep in mind this is going to go around the doll's neck. You want to tie it in a bow so you want to have enough you know of a long strap so that you can do these those things. And we are going to make a little decorative flower. You don't have to make the flower, but I always, I just think it gives it a little, little extra something there. So I'm going to work my 50 chains and then I'll show you how to make the flower. And I'll meet you back. Okay, so I have 50 chains right here. So we are going to work a decorative little flower on the end. So to do that, I'm going to skip my first three chains and work a double crochet in my fourth chain from my hook. Oops, yeah, we are. And this is going to be our first petal. So now I'm going to chain three and we're going to slip stitch right on the end. And I'm going to work five petals. Now you could just have the one petal if you want. It's kind of like a teardrop look. You can have as many petals if you wanted like a clover look. You could have three petals so it looks like a clover. I'm making five because I want a flower. Or you could do a four leaf clover and just have the four. So I chain three, I double crocheted right back in that same stitch. 
and I'm chaining three again and I'm going to slip stitch right back in there for my second petal. So I was, get, I was chit chatting and not telling you what I was doing. So we're going to work the third petal. So let me explain it clearly. So you're going to chain three and double crochet right back in that same space and chain three again and just slip stitch right back in there that same space. So chaining three and I'm going to double crochet right back in that same space. Chaining three, working my slip stitch and so we've got our four petals. I'm going to work one more. So chaining three, double crochet right back in there, chain three and slip stitch right back in there. So it works up pretty fast. There we go. So we've got five petals. So it looks like a flower. So what you're going to do is going to go right back in your chain and you want to get as close to your flower as possible. If you can't get like the very next chain, that's, that's okay. Just get it as close as you can. And you're going to slip stitch right in that next chain. And you're just going to continue to slip stitch across your chain. However you want to work in your chain, it's fine. It, it doesn't matter. It looks nice however you do it. So I am just going to continue to slip stitch and I just like to work a slip stitch in a chain with ties because I just think it looks a little bit nicer and neater instead of just a chain. She looks a little, to me a little sad, a little scraggly there. <laughs> just gives it that little bit more of a polished look I think. And I've got a hair. So I am going to keep going just working my slip stitch all the way across this chain and I will meet you back once I've slip stitched across my chain. Okay so I have worked my slip stitch across my chain here. Here's my little flower. She's looking cute. Now again you don't have to do the flower if you don't want to. You can just slip stitch across the chain or just make you know one petal. It's up to you. And so when you get to the end we are just going to see here's our first stitch here of our I have 16 you might have a different number I'm just going to single crochet right in that stitch and that's just going to really help to anchor that chain in there so there's our first stitch so I'm going to continue to single cro crochet across and then once I get to my last stitch I will work a single crochet and then I'm going to repeat my directions for my second strap here because we need two. So let's keep going. And you want to keep track of your stitch count for this round. This will be a round, but as I said, we're going to incorporate the straps into the round. Less ends to weave in, and just for security purposes, the strap, you know, this is on pretty good now. So coming up on my last single crochet, there we go. And now I'm going to work my 50 chains again. And I'll make my flower and slip stitch across my chain. And so I'll meet you back when I get the second strap done and I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, so we have two straps now complete. So there we go. There's our little flowers. And now we're going to continue to work around. So now we're going to work down the sides here. We are going to work across this back and up this side here and then we'll join. So what you're going to want to do is you will want to have a number that's dividable by three. So whatever that number is, so it could be, I mean, it won't be 36, but you know, 54 would be dividable by 3, 99, however many you need. So here I am at the end of my chain. I'm just going to work a single crochet here. So this is stitch 17 because I have 16 across the top. I'm not counting any stitches on the straps. So this is 17, 18. So just work as evenly as possible as you can and just make sure that your number is dividable by three so you might need to pop a stitch in here or there. So I'm going to go and do that 
All right, I just want to show you a little bit more of what I was doing. I think I was a little brief. So I've worked down the side here. And what I'm going to do is I want to have both sides to be even. So I worked 10 stitches down this side. So I'm going to want to have 10 here. So I have 16 on the cross the top. So 16 plus 10 is 26, 36, and then whatever... Um, I have uh, whatever stitches are going to be around here so as you can see I'm just working on the other end of my chain for where we started so what I might need to do is because I want to have 10 stitches up the side here I might need to add a, a stitch or two just so that it's dividable by three because I don't want it because we're going to do another trim and I want this to look fairly even so I'm going to keep going with my stitching and we will see where we're at so that we're dividable by three. So I'll keep going and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I'm still working on my round here. So I just want to share what I'm doing. So I have 10 more stitches that I need to stitch and then I'm done this round. And I am at stitch 56. So 56 plus 10 is 66. 3 goes into 66, so it works out really well. But what I had to do is I had to add an extra stitch to get to that number. So I don't know if you can see. So here I just worked even, but this stitch here, I just put two single crochet right in there so that I could get to my 56. Otherwise, I would have been at 55, and 55 plus 10 is 65 and that does not compute and so easy way without getting calculators out I mean maybe you learned this in school hopefully you did uh, to know if it's dividable by three is if you add the numbers together and you can um, divide it by three then it works so we have 66 so 6 plus 6 is 12 12 divided by 3 is 4 so if you had like 88 8 plus 8 is 16 and 16 is not dividable by 3 so you know that wouldn't work but if you had 90 you know 9 divided by 3 is 3 so if you I hope you get the idea that was just a little trick that my teachers taught me and maybe you already know it so <laughs> all right so I'm going to keep going just working the final 10 So I'm at stitch eight, so here we go. And you just want to try to be as neat as you can when working up the edge, it's kind of hard. So stitch nine, and then I'm going to pop stitch ten, like right next to that strap there. Whoops. There we go. So now I'm going to join it and I will cut my yarn. Now I want to use a different color. We are going to work a decorative little trim around here, and I guess you wouldn't have to cut your yarn you could just keep stitching but I don't like the joins to show on the right or on the front this is the front here so we want that to look as pretty as it can be I do like to avoid ends but you know sometimes you can't so what I'm gonna do is I'm just joining this guy right here and then I'm gonna snip that find some scissors so I have a total of 66 stitches you know your total might be different Because the final trim that I want to work, I want to start it in the back here. So if you see a little bit of a, a join, it's okay. And another trick I like to do is if you're looking at the back, you know, usually when you look at something, you're looking at it right in the center. So I often like to just start slightly off to the side because the eye's not usually drawn right to the side. The eye, you know, if you're looking at something like this especially because this is going to be tied and you're going to be looking at the pretty flowers so you won't really notice the join so much because it's off to the side so that's just a little little tip I mean it's just something that I like to do and so here we have the front here I mean it's cute as is but I just want to add a little extra something something to the front there so as you can see I joined it behind so it's kind of hidden behind that strap but I still 
just don't want to see that. So we are going to, I'm going to attach my other collar here. Let me get these guys out of the way. So I think it's just those little things that can set your project apart so it looks really polished and nice. I mean, I'm kind of a nitpicky person that way. <laughs> I guess because people often think crochet isn't as nice as knitting or they think that anything that's handmade means that it's not nice. And I'm trying to break that stigma. So I have this green. It doesn't match completely perfect, but I think it's going to be pretty. Okay, so I have our yarn attached here on the side, working on the right side here. And I chained one and now we're going to single crochet right in that same stitch. And we are going to work just a decorative trim around. Now, if you just wanted to, you know, use the same color, you know, certainly feel free. But I wanted a contrasting color. So after we've worked our single crochet, then you're going to chain two. And we're going to work a double crochet in the next stitch. And this is just a very easy trim, decorative trim. I used to use it quite a bit and I haven't used it in a while so I thought it would look nice with this dress. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip the next stitch. And then you're going to single crochet in the next one. And we're just going to repeat that. We're going to chain two and double crochet in the next one. And we're skipping the next stitch. So the repeat is, after you've skipped your stitch, so we're going to single crochet, chain two, double crochet in the next stitch, and then skip the next stitch. And you just repeat that all the way around. So I'll just show you when we get to the front area. Because we've got those straps there, so show you what I'm going to do. So this is a sequence of three. That's why we needed to have our single crochet dividable by three. All right, so I'm at the strap here. So here is single crochet that I made from the previous row, working my double crochet. So I'm just going to pop that strap so it's behind. And so I need to skip this next stitch right here. So right here is my single crochet and then working in the next one right there. Popping in that single crochet and then I'm just going to continue along with my pattern. So we're just going to do this all the way around and then once you get to the end you will join in your stitch and you'll cut your yarn. So it shouldn't take too long to do this little trim. It works up pretty quickly. So I'm going to keep going and again I'll just work in front of this strap so you can see right here how she looks. Nice and neat. So I'm going to keep going and I'll meet you back. Alright, so I'm almost done my little trim here. So my last single crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then I just skip my last stitch there and just join in my first single crochet. So that's why we, as I said before, we needed to have it dividable by three. So you'll join and cut your yarn. Yep, let's do this looking through the camera and it's, you know, it doesn't go well. <laughs> okay. So you can see the front there with just a little decorative trim and I think it looks really sweet. Okay, so we have finished the skirt, the top here, and now we are going to, I wanted to make like a little overskirt to give it kind of like that princessy look. So you don't have to do that. But I want to do that, so we're going to do that. And that was why we have the uh, front loop showing here. So remember we worked in back loops there. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to attach your yarn in one of these front loops. So we want to attach it in the center. So how to find that center stitch, it's pretty simple. You're just going to fold your little dress in half, 
So you want to match these edges as, as close as you can there, like that. Match that. Then you just bring it around into the front. So wherever it's folded, we're going to call that the center stitch. So you'll attach your yarn in that exposed loop. So we're going to use this one right here. And I'm using a contrasting color. And we are going to attach the yarn and just work a, sing a chain one and then a single crochet right in that loop. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to work a total of, we're going to be working in rows, this is not going to be rounds. So there's going to be 73 single crochet. So we started off with 72, so you're going to need to pop in an extra stitch. I suggest just doing that somewhere in the back. So then you have a total of 73. And your last stitch you actually want to have right in the same stitch. So your last stitch, you're going to work your second to the last stitch here. So this would be stitch 72. And then 73 is going to be in there. So they're going to be sharing a stitch. And so I'm going to do that. So I have my first single crochet. Here is my second one. And I'm just going to keep putting in my 73 single crochet. And this will be row one. So I will meet you back at the end of row one. Okay, so I'm at stitch 72. And here we are, 73. So as you can see, she's just sharing there. So now we are going to start row two. We're going to chain one and turn. And now we are going to single crochet right in that same stitch. And we're going to chain three. And we are going to skip our next stitch and single crochet in the next. And this is the start of our repeat here. So it's single crochet, chain three, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next. So we're creating like a little mesh over skirt here. So chain three, skip the next, single crochet in the next. So you're going to continue that all the way around for row two. And I'm not sure how many chain three spaces you'll have. I will let you know when I am done here. <laughs> So I'm going to keep going, working my single crochet, chain three, skip one. So I will meet you back at the end of row two here. Okay, so I'm going to finish up row two here. So at the end of row two, I found out how many chain three spaces you will have. You will have 36. So here's my second to the last single crochet, and then here is my last one, and I'm just putting the final single crochet in there in that last stitch. And you can see we're not working in rounds because this is actually going to oops, drop my hook. It's going to split. So I picked up my hook and we'll get ready for row three. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. So we're going to single crochet right in that same stitch and we're going to single crochet in the next one. And we're going to chain three. And you're going to single crochet around the next chain three space and chain three. And we're going to single crochet around the next chain three space. So you're going to continue this all the way around for row three. So at the end of row three, you are going to single crochet around this chain three space and then you'll single crochet in the last single, cro single crochet so it'll match the first one there. So I'm going to do that all the way around for row three. Okay, so I have finished up row three of our overskirt here. And after row three, you will have a total of 35 chain three spaces. So row two, you had 36. So row three, we have 35 and that is not incorrect. So we are going to chain one and turn and continue with our overskirt here. And we are going to single crochet right in that same stitch. And we are going to chain three. 
and you're going to single crochet right back in that chain three space and we're going to chain three again so starting the pattern sequence here so you're going to single crochet around this chain three space and chain three and just continue that around and again you'll have 36 chain three spaces for this row so I'm working my single crochet around that chain three space I'm chaining three and I'm single crocheting around the next one so I'm just going to keep going for row four and I will meet you back at the end of row four all right so I am finishing up row four I'm going to chain three and I'm just going to single crochet right in that last single crochet where is she? There she is. All right, so at the end of row four, you're going to have 36 single crochet, or I mean, not single crochet, I'm sorry, 36 chain three spaces again. So we are going to chain one in turn. We're going to work row five, and rows five and six are going to, you're going to re actually, we're repeating row three here for row five, and then row six, you're going to repeat row four. So we are going to single crochet right in the same space and we are going to single crochet around the next chain three space so when you're working the odd row you will actually have one less chain three space so you'll have 35 we originally started with we had 36 when you're working the even row so we're going to chain three and then just continue working the single crochet in that chain three space chain three single crochet so I'm going to do this all the way around and then when you get to the end of row five you're going to single crochet around this chain three space then you'll single crochet right in that first single crochet there to complete row five and then when you do row six chain one turn your work chain one single crochet in that same space you're going to chain three and then single crochet right in here chain three single crochet around there for row six so I'll meet you back at the end of row six all right so I am finishing up row six here so I have chain three and I'm just going to single crochet right in that last stitch so again at the end of row six you're going to have 36 chain three spaces so now we're going to get ready for row seven so what we're going to do is this is our little overskirt and I'm going to want it to flare out a little bit like that so we are going to have we're going to do some I guess some discrete decreasing I'm going to turn and you're going to slip stitch around that first chain three space just like that so now we're going to chain one and single crochet around that space so we are getting rid of we originally if we were doing this odd row we would single crochet first then single crochet single crochet in the same stitch then single crochet in that chain three space but we're getting rid of that first single crochet so we have a single crochet and that chain three space and now we're just going to chain three oops this yarn is a bit, it's very splitty. One, two, three. So, oh my word, it happened again. And we're gonna single crochet around the next chain three space. So we're gonna continue that around. So chain three, and then just single crochet in the next chain three space. So you're gonna do that all the way around for row seven here. And when you get to this last chain three space you're just going to single crochet in this last space here and you're not going to single crochet in that first single crochet so i'm going to do that all the way around and i'll meet you back at the end of oh and don't worry about these ends i had run out of yarn i the yarn had gotten tangled really badly and i couldn't fix it so i had to cut it which is a bummer i hate doing that but couldn't be helped so that's what the, where these ends came from in case you were wondering so I'm just going to keep going for row seven and I'll meet you back. Okay, so we finished up row seven. So we have our 35 
chain three spaces and we're going to continue to work the split area so widen that up a little bit so we are going to turn our work to do that and we're just going to repeat row seven so you're just going to work your slip stitch around that first chain three space chain one single crochet in that space and then chain three so we're just eliminating that first where before we had the two single crochet now we just have one and that will cause us to have one less chain three space so I chain three a single crochet in the next chain three space so I'm going to keep doing that all the way across for row eight and then when you get to the end of row eight here you're just going to single crochet in that last space and not single crochet in the next so I'm going to take a peek at this and see how many rows that I want to do. So we're on row eight. So why don't we work up to row 14 and we'll see. I'll let you know how many rows that we need to work to see how far I want it. Because I'm not going to have this go all the way down um, to match this. I, I do want to have a little bit of it, this part of the skirt showing. I think it'll look cute so I am going to um, work up to row 14 and I'll meet you back all right so I said I was going to work up until row 14 but I actually worked up until row 15 so I think 15 was the magic number there and at the end of row 15 I have 27 chain 3 spaces so we started off with 36 and we went down to 27 to get our split skirt effect like that. So when you get to the end of row 15, you will want to cut your yarn. Okay, so once you've cut your yarn at the end of row 15, we are still going to work on this over skirt here. I want to have a, a pretty little trim around it. Actually we're going to do a similar trim to this guy here. So you're going to want to attach your yarn at the top of this V. So you can see how it, it's like an upside down V here. So right here at the top on the one side and we are going to be working, want to work on the wrong side. So I'm just attaching my yarn and we're going to single crochet all the way around, but it's going to be a row. So I'm just chaining one and working a single crochet right in that same space. So you want to work a multiple of three and then it's going to be plus one. So you want it, all of your stitches to be a multiple of three and then your last stitch is going to be your plus one. So I believe it's 124 stitches, but I, you know, your stitch count might be different. You just want to evenly in space your single crochet around. And as I said before, in a multiple of three, and then you're just going to have your plus one at the end. So 124, I believe is multiple of three plus one. So, so I'm going to do that. So let me just work a couple stitches so you know what you mean. So we're working on the edges of the rows in the front. So you just want to space them out as neatly as you can. And I suggest if you do want to have your trim in a different color, I always find it to look nicer when you have your, this is our single crochet, and then we'll do this actual trim for our next row is to do the single crochet row in the same color because you can't get a completely it's a fairly neat trim but it's not completely neat and tidy so I just think it looks better when you use the same color that's just me but you know certainly if you want to jump into your other color you can do that but I'm actually just going to work this whole now some of these you can work on the end of these single crochets that's what I'm doing here
but I'm going to work this trim all in the same color. So I'm not going to be, um, I hardly have any of this color left, so I kind of need to use the green. And then when you get to your bottom here, you can work like one or two stitches in your chain three space, however you want to do it. You know, however you think it looks neat. You don't want them to be super crowded together, but you don't have to get like, you know, I'm not going to be too, you know, crazy about the stitch count. But I will tell you how much, how many I have at the end in case you do want to have the same amount as me, but again, you want it to be a multiple of three plus one. So I'm going to keep going, working my single crochet around, but you do want to be working on the wrong side. So this is the wrong side here, because um, you know this is the front here, so this is the right side. So I'm going to meet you back at the end of this row one. Okay, so I finished up my row one of my trim here of my overskirt. And I did indeed do 124 single crochet. So again, that's a multiple of three plus one. So 123 divided by three is 41, I believe. And then you add one, so you get the 124. So if you're wondering how that works. So now I'm going to work the trim part for row two. So it's going to be the same as we did down here. So you're just going to chain one, turn our work. So now we're working on the right side because we want the trim. I wanted the trim on the right side. So I'm going to single crochet in that same stitch and then we work a chain two. And we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. And then you skip the next one. So we're going to work single crochet. I skipped the next, single crochet in the next chain two, double crochet in the next. Skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, chain two, double crochet in the next. Skip our next stitch, single crochet. So you're going to do that all the way around and then your last stitch will be a single crochet in your very last stitch. So you're going to skip and then you're just going to pop in your single crochet and then you can cut your yarn. So I'm going to go do that. I'll go finish up this trim and I'll meet you back. All right, so here we are. I have finished up the trim for the skirt and when I got to the end here, I just cut my yarn. So now we have our cute little over skirt. She's all done and then of course we'll need to weave in those ends. So now we are going to do something about this area here. So we're going to make a little tie. So to make our ties I want to make it so that I have a little flower at the end here like this. So I'm going to use this green yarn here because that's the same color as the overskirt and I really don't have much of actually I have just a couple yards of this left of the multicolored yarn so I don't think I would have enough to make the tie. We'll just keep using this green. I am going to get my slip knot on there. So what I'm going to do is you're going to work one half of the tie and then you'll work the other half. So I am going to chain, I I'm going to chain uh, 50 and I'm going to see how long that is. I'm not sure if it's long enough. Oops, and I'm using the wrong size hook. I've got my H hook. Here's my 3.75 millimeter. It's the same color, except this guy's like, I don't know, got a little faded. I don't know why. Definitely difference in size. <laughs> All right, so let's chain 50 and see how long that's going to be. So I have my 50 chains. I actually don't think that's going to be long enough. So I'm going to chain a 75. I think that'll be long enough. 
So I'm just going to keep going and chaining my 75 and I'll meet you back. All right, so I have my 75 chains and I think that's going to be long enough now. So what we're going to do is we're going to work the flower just like we did for the ties for the dress. So I am going to skip three chains and I'm going to double crochet in the fourth chain for my hook. And then chain three and work a slip stitch right back in that stitch to create my first petal here. So we're going to chain three again to work the second petal. Now if you didn't want to make the tie you could certainly use a ribbon instead to weave in and out of those spaces on the waistband but I want to use, I want to make a tie, so we're going to make a tie. <laughs> so I've made my second petal. I want to make five petals. Now if you wanted to uh, have, as I said before, for the ties for the top of the dress, you could, you know, make a clover or even if you want to do a four leaf clover, that would be really cute. If you were making like a green you know, like a dark Kelly green dress, that would be really cute. You know, however you want. Or you could just have one petal at the end. You know, it's completely up to you. But I want a flower. So we're doing a flower. I love flowers. So I got four petals, so I'm, um, I've got one more to go. So chaining three. Double crochet. Chain three and slip stitch right back in there. Okay, so there we go. I've got my flower there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip stitch all the way across this chain. So I am just going to get as close to that flower as I can. So if you can't get to the very, very next stitch, you know, that's okay. Just get as close as you can. And I'm going to work my slip stitch there. So there we go, we've got our first flower all made and secure and I'm just going to continue to slip stitch up my chain. You can slip stitch in your chain however you wish, so work in your chain however you want to. Okay, so I finished slip, sti slip stitching up my chain here, so I just think that looks a little, a little nicer there. And then we've got our little, our little flower here on the end. And so now what you're going to want to do is we're not cutting our yarn. I'm going to chain 75 down the other side and work the flower and then work our way up. And then when I get back to, because then when you slip stitch back up your chain, you're going to be right back here and then you're going to cut your yarn. So then you will have two tails in the middle, but that's okay because I don't want to have the tails on the ends here where the tie is, on the end of the tie because this part is going to be around the waist and it's actually going to be hidden. Uh, but I'll let you know how we're going to do that after I do the second part of the chain. So I'm going to go ahead and chain my 75, work my flower on the end, and then slip stitch back up and I will meet you back. Okay, so I'm at the other end of my tie, so I'm just going to cut my yarn now. Oops. Don't throw it around. <laughs> And there we go. So we've got our tie. So what we're going to do next is what you'll want to do is you're going to want to weave these tails in through here and here. I usually do it like this. And then after you do that, you are going to weave this in. So you're going to want the center part of your tie to be right there. So this is the center and weave all this in so then it's, you know, these guys will go in the back here. And then when you're going to dress your doll, then you can just cinch it closed and, you know, tie it in a bow or however you want to. And then that will secure it nicely for the waist. So I do not have my yarn needle up here with me, but I'm going to show you how we are going to we're going to cover this up. So this is just purely functional here. So that's why I'm not too concerned about this 
because it's all going to be covered up. And what we're going to cover it up with, I already started, is flowers. Now, if you've followed me on my channel, you know I am not a fan of sewing. I try to avoid it as much as I can, but sometimes you need to sew once in a while, so we will be sewing. So what I'm going to sew, yeah, <laughs> we're going to be sewing. So I already made a couple flowers and I'll show you how to make these guys. So I'm going to have this yellow one in the center. So that's going to go over my tie. So before you sew your flowers on, you want to have your tie woven in first and you want to make sure that it's centered the way you want because you're going to be sewing these guys over top. So don't worry about sewing over top. We're only going to have flowers just on the front here. So I've already made quite a few. So here's, I'm trying to think, I want to have the yellow one in the center and then the rest are going to be pink. And you can, you know, certainly have whatever colors that you want. Could even be the same color as your dress and I'm going to sew them on like so across just to uh, just until I get to the end here so I think I'm going to make let me see here's a couple more I've made and I will show you how to make these in a second got a fuzzy on that one so I'm just going to kind of overlap them a little bit and you can certainly have your flowers on however you want to you can you know have them farther out if you want but I like it I like them overlapping and I'm gonna have the the yellow one in the center I just thought that would be kind of cute to have a little bit of a different color there to go to the end so I'm not gonna worry about having flowers back here I mean you could go I, I don't want to go all the way around because I want to be able to when I tie this you know to be able to gather it a little bit so if I sew over the whole thing I'm not going to be able to gather it so you know I'll just have it sewed in the front but then I'll be able to you know gather it and tie it so it's snug around the doll in the back so let's make some flowers here so I have this green yarn it's the same weight yarn and they work up very quickly so we will get our slip knot going here oops come on so there we go and they're going to be very similar to what we made for the ends of the ties so you are going to chain four so we have chain four and we're just going to double crochet in the fourth chain from our hook And we'll chain three just like we did with the ties and slip stitch in that first chain and if you don't want to make flowers you could uh, put bows on there if you wanted to or you could make clovers but or you don't have to make any flowers if you know if you don't mind that waistband or if you just wanted to replace the waistband with a ribbon you could do that as well but I kind of wanted to make it a little bit extra, a little bit over the top by adding the flowers. You know, very like girly, princessy. That was kind of the vision I had in my mind. And as I said before, I probably will make another dress in a slightly heavier yarn to see how that works. Because not everybody likes to work with super fine yarn. This is more, I think I said DK weight or sport weight, but this is probably closer to a finger finger ring I can't say fingering fingering yarn all right so I'm just continuing working my petals here so chaining three slip stitching in there so I'll work my last petal because I was talking too much one two three four so one chaining three one two three and we'll double cro oops, double crochet right back in that same stitch there and chain three and we slip stitch right back in that same stitch so it's a very simple flower so there we go I've got my five petals and then when I'm done I just cut my yarn now I'm going to make sure I have a tail for sewing 
So you want to make sure you have a long enough tail. I mean, my tail is probably about, I don't know, seven inches or so. It's That should be plenty long enough. Because you also want to keep in mind, like, let's say you were going to give the dress to a little girl, you know, and if they have younger siblings and little ones like to put things in their mouths, you want to make sure that it's sewed on pretty securely so you don't have to worry about, you know, something falling off and getting in a little one's mouth. So there we go. There we have a flower. So just make as many as you need to fit across the front here of your dress and then you will sew them on over top of your waistband however you want to. And then after that what you'll want to do is you'll want to weave in all of your loose ends here and if your dress needs to be blocked a little bit, like I'll probably block this a little because, you know, she's a little bit flippy. <laughs> but I think once it's on the doll, it should be okay. Even if it's not, I think it's kind of cute. It's like a, kind of has like, it's kind of like a bell looking dress, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, that bell shape. <laughs> so, but I will uh, meet you back after I've got all those guys sewed on. So I'm going to get to it. Okay, so I went ahead and I finished sewing up my little flowers here. So I just put the yellow in the center and then I have the pink guys on the edge. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flowers all the way across. Now you can have, you know, less flowers or no flowers if you prefer. I just wanted to cover up the drawstring here. And so it is stitched over the drawstring, but that's okay because in the back you still have some leeway there to cinch your clothes. So when you dress the doll, um, I would suggest putting the doll in feet first, then pulling it up, and then you just tie this around the neck. So I did say that I wanted to make another dress in a slightly heavier weight yarn, so I did do that. And here it is. So here we go. I use uh, Karen Simply Soft and I decided instead of flowers in the front I wanted to put a big old bow. I love bows so I will show you how I made that bow. I did not intend for this to be a patriotic looking dress but here we are. I think it is really cute though. It looks really cute on the doll. So if you're looking at the two dresses which, let me get a better view here. So if we're looking at the two dresses here, so you can see the blue one is definitely a little bit longer than this mint green guy, a multicolored guy. So this one, of the this is used a little, probably closer to fingering weight yarn, and then this was Simply Soft, which to me is labeled a uh, worsted weight, but again, to me, it's more DK weight yarn. So DK weight yarn works really well with this pr uh, project. Just keep in mind that your dress will be a little bit longer, and if you use fingering weight, it's going to be a little bit shorter. But I think both of them turned out really, really cute. I'm really happy with them. So here's the back, and here's the drawstring. I did the same uh, stitch counts and everything as I did on the lighter colored dress and it worked out pretty well and even the same uh, chain amounts for the ties so let me go ahead and show you how I made this bow alright so to make the bow I did use my 3.75 millimeter hook I have an eye hook here because I left that downstairs I don't feel like getting it but it doesn't matter it will um, you know the directions are going to be the same you know, just, just the uh, sample bow is going to look a little bit larger than this guy. So uh, you will want to use your 3.75 millimeter hook, so just pretend that this is. All right, so to, what I did was I chained nine. So I have my nine chains. So I made this bow using linked double crochet. So if you've never done linked double crochet, I can put in the eye a, a, the link to the video that demonstrates the linked double crochet. It is a stitch of the week, but it is pretty easy to learn. And I do like it for certain projects because the stitches are more uh, compacted together. And I really wanted to have a clean edge 
when I did this bow. I wanted to have a nice kind of tight edge there. So that's why I used the link double crochet. If you really find the link double crochet too difficult, then you can certainly just use regular double crochet. But to do the link double crochet, so you are going to work in the second chain from your hook. You are not going to yarn over yet. So I'm inserting my hook and I'm just going to pull up a loop. So I have my loop there and then I'm going to go into my next chain, pull up a loop. I have three loops in my hook. Now we're just going to work a regular double crochet. So yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two. So when you complete this stitch, it eliminates the skip chain three and you do have a loop right here if you can see that. So you want to keep that in mind because you're going to be working in that loop for the remainder of your stitches. So for the second one, you're going to insert your hook in that loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. So you have your two loops. Now we're going to go in the chain, pull up a loop. We have our three loops. Now we're going to, we are going to complete the stitch working our double crochet. So yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two. So here is that loop. We're going to do that for the next one. So yarn over, pull up a loop, insert our hook into the next chain, pull up a loop, three loops. So now you just work a regular double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're going to do this all the way across. And you can work in your chain however you want to. Doesn't matter if you're working in one loop, two loops, bump, back, bump, it's whatever your preference is. So I have one more chain to go. So there is my last chain. So our first row is completed. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochet. So now linked double crochet. So you can just see they're a little bit closer together. They look slightly different than a regular double crochet, but not too drastic. It's still the same height. All right, so now to work row two, we're gonna chain two, turn our work. So we are going to work, we're not yarning over yet, in the second chain from our hook, pulling up our loop, and now we are going to work right in that first stitch. Usually you would chain three and work in the next one and your chain three would count, but as I said, I really want my edges to be compact, so that's why we're doing this linked double crochet. So I'm just going to insert my hook right in that same stitch there, and this will be the remainder of the row. So you're going to repeat row two or however long you want your bow. So we have our first linked double crochet in row two. So there is that loop there, inserting my hook, and then working in the next stitch here, just like we did in the chain, and working that stitch. So I'm gonna go right back in that loop, pull up a loop, work in the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now you could also work your bow in single crochet, but that will take a very long time. <laughs> well, it depends on the size of your bow. I wanted a big, huge, you know, in your face bow. I love bows. I just love them. I think they're great. I grew up in the 80s, you know, big bows on dresses, you know, I was all about that. <laughs> big bow in your hair. I loved that. So I just kind of, I felt like uh, it's going to make flowers, but I just thought, you know, this dress calls for a bow. So you can uh, do whatever you want. You could either make the flowers or you can make the big bow. It's up to you. Or you can make nothing, however you want to make your dress. All right, so I'm just going to repeat row two, and then I'll show you uh, for a couple rows. Now for the sample bow that I made, I made, I'm pretty sure I made 30 rows here because again, I wanted it to be a big, a big old bow in the front. But you know, if you wanted your bow a little bit smaller, that's okay. 
just keep in mind that you know your depending what color you used for your tie here you know that might show through I just wanted that to be completely covered up and I did make the the tie the same color as the main part of the dress so that kind of helps to hide it a little bit so if you did you know wanted to have a smaller bow then I just suggest you know that you have made your tie in the same color as this because so, then it won't be as noticeable so I'll work a couple more rows and then I'll show you how I constructed the bow all right so I worked 14 rows here for my bow so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn this into a bow so what I did is I just folded it like that I'm matching the end of my final row to the end of my first row and I need to chain one and what I did was I just slip stitched across to join them together so I'm inserting my hook I chained one I'm inserting my hook in that first stitch of my final row and then in the first stitch on the other end of row one and just slip stitch them together so no need to sew them together I mean we will be sewing the bow onto the dress but I try to eliminate as much sewing as I can <laughs> sometimes you can't though All right, so there is my last stitch. So I still did not cut my yarn. I did turn it inside out this way, just because this is kind of a, a chunky seam there. So like kind of clunky looking, I didn't want it to be quite so obvious. But before I did that, I didn't cut this. I just made a big giant loop. I took my yarn here and just pulled it through and you'll understand why like that and then I turned it inside out so now I have my working yarn sticking out here so what you want to do is you want to take that working yarn and I do suggest weaving this end in first but I'm not gonna bother because I'm not gonna use this bow actually for something but I'll probably use this yarn repurpose it for something else so then what I did was I took my working yarn and depending how you want your bow if you want it like this or I wanted mine more like that so I actually started on the wrong side here and just wound it around fairly tightly so when you turn it the other way, see there you go, then you have your bow. So however big you want your center here is however many times you would wind your yarn around the center of the bow. And then once it was wound, I cut my yarn and I inserted the yarn into my yarn needle and I just poked it through down here and it kind of cinched it then. I just fed the yarn through and then you would take your bow and when you do cut your yarn leave leave a nice long tail then you can start sewing it onto your dress however wherever you want it I you know obviously put the bow in the middle here and I sewed I didn't actually work through this part here I worked all in here on the other side just so that it could puff out a little bit so that's how I did the bow both style of dresses here so we have the one with the flowers and the lighter weight yarn and then one with the bow and the slightly heavier weight yarn so I hope you enjoyed this project and I thank you so much for watching